the earth and kick it for a while. Then a boy. I think I know who, I, I know who Austin loves. And everyone wants to get new boys for Austin. That would be an accessible gift. All right, come on, kiddos. So uh, every Sunday morning, we bless our kids because God loves kiddos. They're, they're, they're becoming they're becoming convinced that God loves you guys and he's not annoyed by you. He wants you close to him. So let's just let's just bless our kids and that they would have a fun time and that they would hear truth about Jesus. God, we thank you for kids at Cat City Church. Jesus, we thank you that you weren't annoyed by little kids, but you wanted them to come close yes. to you. So, Father, I pray that as our kids go downstairs, Lord, that they would have a ton of fun. They would learn truths about you. And, God, that they would be reminded uh, and convinced, God, that you love them. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, kids, have some good times downstairs. All right, so uh, today I have an awesome friend. When we were at the university, we had an opportunity uh, to host an internship, and so uh, people would come and learn the ins and outs of, of being missionaries, and Radon came down, uh, and we became buds, we would meet for coffee, we had a, we, we had a small discussion group, kind of like what we call DNA groups, with a brother from Ukraine called uh, Yuri, and we would sit together and just be in awe of who God is, and uh, I, I, I'm privileged to have Radon here to talk, and, and Kim is out with a baby. They got a, they got a three month old, yeah. two months old, look at that. And they're serving Jesus at IU, uh, Indiana University. So I wanna invite Radon to come up, and uh, he's gonna share with what they're doing, and then bring the word. All right. All right. You know how to turn that thing on? You got it? Okay. Hey y'all. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. How y'all doing this morning? Woo! I like being in churches like this, man. This nation's represented differently. Like showing God's heart, right? Like God has a heart for every tribe, every tongue, every nation. Among people all across the earth. Because everybody needs to hear the good news about who Jesus is. Yeah. Is that clear? Um, so, before we get into the Word, I want to share about what we do as uh, missionaries. Um, so, me and my wife, uh, we've been married for uh, three years, and well, I've been in Chi Alpha for seven, and she's been in Chi Alpha for about 12, uh, 12 years, so about almost 20 years between the both of us working with uh, college students. Uh, for myself, I got a... Um, Saved, uh, filled the spirit, and disciple in Chi Alpha uh, Campus Ministries, and um, I went to Purdue Calumet. So uh, I stayed home from college, but God still worked out. Ran into a uh, campus pastor there, and um, he just took down my phone number. And then a couple weeks later, he challenged me and just said, "The reason why students are going to hell is because Christians on campus aren't doing anything about it." And that was the toughest truth I've ever heard in my life, and that stuff still rings true uh, in my heart today. And, um, and so God has put on my heart always reaching the next generation. Uh, we've always been taught, even in Chi Alpha, that we're always one generation removed from um, a nation not knowing God. And it's even true even today. And so I... Um, I'm privileged and, and honored to be like on, kind of like on the front lines of the next generation, if you will. Me and some of my friends, uh, Lee's here, they all work at um, UW up the street here, downtown. They're pretty awesome missionaries too. Um, and so it's always been a, a dream of mine since I've been in college that God challenged me to do that. And I want to just share with you more of what, what God has called us to do and what God has been doing. And, Indiana University. It's still tough for me to, to know that I'm a missionary at Indiana University, being that I graduated from Purdue. It's still tough. <laughs> still, I said, God must really have a, must be real because he called me that. So. Uh, so we have a video. It's going to share with you a little bit more of what, of what we do there. So. Hey, 
You play the video role?
For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And so I'm going to read 11 through 16. Can I get somebody to read 17 through 22? Can somebody do that for me? Anybody? Can raise your hand. Thank you, buddy. And so he says, so then, I'm in the CSB. I actually like that translation, by the way. Which one is that one? Man, that's a good, that's a good. I actually like the breakdown of how they did that one. Uh, so then, um, remember that at one time, you were Gentiles in the flesh. Gentiles are non-Jewish people. Called the uncircumcised by those called the circumcised, Jews of that day, which is done in the flesh by human hands. At that time, you were without Christ excluded from the citizenship of Israel and foreigners to the covenants of promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you, are, you who are far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility in his flesh. He made of no effect the law consisting of commands and expressed in regulations, so that he might create in himself one new man from the two, resulting in peace. He did this so that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross by which he put the hostility to death. Came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by the Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built in the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Amen. So we're going to pray and jump into the word, okay? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you how powerful it is. Thank you how, through Jesus, this, these things are possible for us to live out. And so, God, we ask you for grace to help us to live this out. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Um, in this upcoming year, there'll be a lot of important things going on. Um, it's the beginning of a new decade, 2020. Didn't have 2020 vision. Things fell all over Facebook. Oh, I, I got time. But um, <laughs> uh, we as a nation uh, will be voting for a new president this year. Um, Congress and some other things that will be very important to you as an individual and important to us, this church as a community. The hot button issues that may come up could prove to, to divide us as a community. Jesus and the Apostle Paul have some things to say about this and how we can stay united despite our political, cultural, and ethnic differences. The truth is we don't all have to think alike, and that is okay. Another truth is uh, we should all be different. God is not looking for all of us to be the same. He created us differently. What Jesus is looking, looking to is making us all into his image. He wants us to reflect his love, his integrity, and mission to each other first and to those in the world, our communities around us, Madison, Wisconsin, great area. And here's, uh, here's a commentary about that verse, both verses we just read, by a guy named Kyle Fever. He says, um, this passage trumpets the good news that God has brought uncircumcision, that's not Jewish people, that's most of us in this room, and circumcision, which were the Jewish people together. One radical element of this message is that God's unification of the two groups does not mean uniformity. One group does not fall under the power of the more dominant group. Rather, Paul says that God in Christ has made one humanity of the two. Gentiles do not become Jews. Jews do not become Gentiles. We can say African Americans don't become white Americans. We, don't, we can say Indians don't become Chinese. We can say rich don't become poor, right? The things that separate us in our society. 
Rather, both Jews and Gentiles become united in Christ as Jew and Gentile. The uncircumcision are welcome into the story of God played out through the people of the circumcision to play their own part in the continuous story of redemption. In other words, those of us who are not Jewish in the Old Testament, those were God's chosen people to be his example to the world. Now God, through Jesus, now brings everybody else in and say, you are a part of this redemption story, and I'm going to use you in my plan for humanity before I turn back. That's a good thing. Yes. It's fun. I'm happy that I don't have to be a Jew in order to be accepted by God, to be used by God. I want to throw that one out there. The point is that God's reconciliation and transformation of humanity finds expression in a unity marked by welcoming and hospitality. Consider area of areas of divisiveness within the church or even within culture. We even in the church should not presume that those outsiders need to become like us. The church should be a light that paves the way by welcoming both Jew and Gentile and united them into God's mission in Christ. That's, the explanation is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we may be different, but Jesus brought us together to be a family. Therefore, I honor you, welcome you, and love you despite our differences. I can learn from you, grow with you, yes. be transformed by you. Yes. Because Jesus, the hope of glory, lives in you. Despite all the other stuff we may, we may disagree about, we are still family. Like you got family that just drives you crazy, but they family. Like you can't, we can't pick who's in our family. How much more in like God's family also? Now the question is like, as God's family, how do we uh, be family to each other? Um, the answer I believe is is found in, in our passage, Ephesians chapter two. Um, Ephesians um, verse. I'm sorry. Ephesians um, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 makes it clear that despite our ethnicity, political views, and any other thing that tends to separate, we have this one thing in common. Everybody. We were all dead. Yeah. Um, no matter if you think your ideas are right or wrong, here's the truth that, that is hard for us to all get. We were all dead. Can you say it with me? We were all dead. We were all disobedient to Jesus, and we were all enemies of God. We all had this one thing in common. We were deserving of God's wrath and punishment. But the scripture says in verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love that he had for us, he made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in our trespasses. Yes. If Jesus had this love for us, how much more should we treat each other, those of us who have been rescued? If we have any disagreements with each other, if we have any differences about ourselves, we should always start from the position of love with each other, knowing that we were all rescued from the death that we deserve. Because of what Christ did for us, it has placed each and every one of us on the same level playing field. Bill Gates, if he gets saved, he's the same as me. <laughs> Even though according to world standards, he got a few billion more dollars than me. But in God's eyes, we are the same. No matter what group you belong to, black, white, Asian, conservative, or liberal, those things no longer separate us in Christ. Like our text said in verses 15, 14 and 15, Jesus has torn down the dividing wall between us. He has made peace between us and God. If there is peace between us and God, how do you think we should act towards one another? Especially believers. Especially those of us who say we are one with Jesus. There is no hostility between me and God, therefore there should be none between us. God the Father is proud to call you his child. 
Here's another question. Are you happy to call each other brothers and sisters in Christ? Are you willing to be family to each other despite your differences? If the answer is yes, here are some things we can do to help strengthen our bond as a family in this church. Um, and this, like, this is some practicality that I'm going to just put down. Uh, and if you take your notes, this, this is a good part to take notes in. <laughs> um, number one, eat together. Everybody needs food. Everybody eats. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a language of heaven, you know? Like, we can skip a few meals, you know, but it's, we're going to be eating in heaven. There's going to be a big bank. Good food going to be there. Um, but this week, like, someone in this church that you normally don't hang out with, plan a meal with you. Say, I'm going to get dinner or lunch with you so I can get to know you. Um, secondly, um, Choose to believe the best about your brother and sister in Christ, even if you have different uh, points of view about things. Just because someone thinks differently than us doesn't make us right, or vice versa. What it does mean, I have, must have a listening ear to both sides of whatever argument is going on. I mean, in this thing, this year, the elections is coming up, is what I'm trying to hit on here. But this could be in any uh, fear of whatever we want to talk about. Uh, thirdly, uh, find a need among each other and meet it. When's the last time you asked your brothers and sisters in Christ, hey, is there anything I can help you with? Spend time in each other's homes. Proximity breeds fondness. It's just the truth. Like, you can't get to love something that you don't know. Like, it'll be like with me and my wife if we got married and I moved to Vegas and just lived there and just came home once, one day out the year. It wouldn't really work out too well because I'm not close to her. But because you're in close proximity to each other, the things that you rub that rubs you the wrong way will be the things that, like, help bring you closer because you will hash it out and box it out and deal with each other in a way. And lastly, choose to learn from one another. Our cultures, places where we come from, are all a reflection of who Jesus is. And every culture around the world has a part of Christ in it. Even though it's like tainted by sin, there are still some things that we can learn from each other. Like, I learned a lot about honor from my Asian friends when we were at Purdue. Like, they were the most, they honored everybody. African Americans and Latinos, I've learned a lot about family. I mean, I'm black, but like from other Latinos, um, it was about family, and we we're there for each other the most. Like the white people, white people are the most adventurous people I've ever met, the ones that I know. Like going to go hunt your own food like that. I don't do that. But I can, like, that's something I can learn. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can learn to, like, st take steps um, of, of obedience towards Christ when he tells me to do something. Because I see my friends over here who are just adventurous. They're like, you know, Jesus told me to move to Afghanistan. I had a friend who was moving to Tajikistan with two kids and one on the way. Um, and he's just going. He's a Canadian. And I'm like, where the root of that type of drive come from? I'm like, well, yeah, that's the way he grew up. It's like they always were adventurers. They were always taking steps and leaps of faith. And now he's doing it for Jesus, like halfway around the world, James and Terry. Um, and so I'm getting ready to close. And, and I, I want to close with this, this scripture. And what I ought to call time is, is we're going to reflect on the scripture, but we're also going to pray for each other. So as we move into this year together, we grow closer together as a family. And it's John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. <coughs> I give you a new command. Love one another. Just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. Remember that. Just as Jesus has loved you, we ought to love one another. It's a tough one.
By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Not how many Bible verses you know. He says, you know, you be, you, you know that you are my followers about how you love each other. And he's talking to the believers at this moment, not unbelievers. Brothers and sisters, let us take this command on you seriously, especially in today's climate. Because the world is looking to us. If we can't show what it means to be transformed by Jesus, there is no hope for the world. And to know what it means to live in a Christ-centered community. And as I close, what I want us to do is to meditate on the scripture, but pray for each other as we move forward in today's, in 2020. Let, it, let this be a year that we are one, as Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are one. Yes. And so I'll, I'll, I'll close and then you come on up and do it up. Uh, Father, thank you for your word. Jesus, let us be doers of your word, not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. And God, we pray for the grace to love each other in the same vein that you loved us. Let it be said at Capital City Church that they love each other well, and I want to be a part of that. Uh, and God, we just pray for that. And uh, forgive us, Lord, where maybe our political ideologies or our ethnic ideologies have trumped what you're calling us to be as a body. And let those things die home with it as well. And help us to be one as the Trinity is one. We just thank you for the grace that you're going to give us to do that in this church this year. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you help us to love like you loved us? Okay. 
But help us this year to be a people that, that nothing hinders our love and our relationships. And then we're going to do that in five minutes, um, and then we're going to pray for our missionaries at the end. But let's take a few minutes here. Let's turn to somebody close to us. Let's pray that the love would be the be at the forefront, that it would it would tear down any dividing wall, and that we would be people who love like Jesus loved us.